Hey everyone, this is Nick, and it's time for a new Ubuntu release. 22.10, or Kinetic Kudu, is now out, or should be by the time you watch this video. It's nothing revolutionary, but it's still a good version. So we're going to take a look at what's new, how they handled the transition to Libvid Vita, and what new things you can expect in the official Ubuntu variants. And we're going to take a look at our sponsor. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games. For example, Focal Board. If you don't know about it, it's an open source alternative to tools like Trello, Asana, or Notion. It lets you create milestones, keep track of your nodes, have a bird's eye view of your projects, and it basically helps you get stuff done. And you can deploy your focal board server in one click from your Linode dashboard, something I should probably do to ensure that I keep delivering my videos on time. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. Okay, so let's start with what is new under the hood. Ubuntu 22.10 uses the Linux kernel 5.19. It's recent enough, but they missed version 6, which is a shame as it brings a lot of performance improvements for AMD hardware and it's going to be absolutely necessary to use any of these new Arc GPUs from Intel. Hey, just because no one has one right now doesn't mean that no one will in the next six months. Although your grandma will probably buy you a GDX 750 instead of an Arc 750 for Christmas. Ubuntu 22.10 also brings Pipewire as the default audio server. This seems like a fine decision, it's been working perfectly for me on Fedora since Fedora 36, and it works with older systems like Pulse Audio. And finally, WebP is now supported throughout the whole system, wherever thumbnails are used. Of course, all applications and libraries in the repos have been updated to a more recent version as well, but Ubuntu 22.10 is not an LTS version. So if you're moving to this one, know that it will only be supported for 9 months and so you will have to play the upgrade game every 6 months until you land on another LTS. Okay, now onto the desktop. Kinetic Kudu uses a relatively complete GNOME 43 desktop with the usual Ubuntu add-ons. So you'll get the nice quick settings in the main GNOME menu instead of little drop-down lists. It looks better, it's clearer and it gives you more functionality out of the menu since you get to pick audio inputs and outputs, Wi-Fi networks, or change from dark to light mode. You can change the power profiles, you can turn on night light, and more right from the menu. Ubuntu didn't fix the little issues with this thing though, as the Bluetooth menu still cannot list available Bluetooth devices or already paired ones. There's an extension that fixes that and that allows you to see all your paired devices inside of a little drop down in the Bluetooth toggle, just like every other toggle, but I guess Ubuntu didn't want to ship an untested extension in their default desktop. I can understand that, other distros don't have qualms about this, but Ubuntu does. GNOME 43 also adds pagination in the application's grid, which I didn't realize was needed until they added it. When you're using a touchpad, you don't care, but on a mouse, it wasn't extremely clear how to navigate to the next app page. Now, there's also a pretty nice feature that makes a comeback from the old Unity days. If you have multiple windows of the same app open, when you click on its dock icon, you'll have an expose view of all these windows, and only these windows. It's a great method to navigate windows from a single app, and I love that they included it back in. Settings panels have also been revamped a bit, with a new Ubuntu desktop panel that lists all settings for the dock and desktop icons, and the appearance settings, now also listing the wallpapers on top of dock mode and accent colors. Ubuntu 22.10 doesn't include the GNOME 43 device security panel, which gives you info about how secure your hardware is, including secure boot support, TPM, some BIOS settings, and more. And I can understand why they left it out. While the feature is interesting to see how secure your hardware is, it's not yet complete. You have no idea how to fix any of these issues or if they're fixable at all. So this thing should be further refined in GNOME 44 and later, and I guess Ubuntu will include it then. 
Now, on top of that, smaller changes include better performance in GNOME Shell and support for high-resolution scroll wheels, which should make mouse enthusiasts quite happy. Now, on to Nautilus and other applications. Nautilus is the app that grabbed the most changes. With an adaptive interface, you can resize at will, useful for small screens or just to have a small file manager on the side. The list view has way better performance, rubber band selection, you get some blank space between elements so you can right click, but it did lose the tree view feature, so you can't expand folders anymore. It should make its way back in GNOME 44, but for now it's not there. You also get a new properties dialog that lets you mark files as executable right from the start, which is nice, and instead of tabs you have pages. Not a huge change, but it does look nicer. The search UI also got an update with a clearer filter button and little tags in the URL bar to let you quickly remove elements from your search. A bunch of other extra tools have been added by default as well. There's a new email option that replaces the previous extension. You get emblems to denote symbolic links or read-only files. You can also middle-click the next or previous button to open the resultant directory in a new tab. Thumbnails with transparency will display a checkerboard background. You can copy the current path to the clipboard from the context menu or open the current directory in other apps from the same menu. And the main menu has been reorganized as well, although it lost the ability to manually hide the sidebar. <laughs> That's a lot of small changes. And it basically makes Nautilus into a way more competent file manager. Now, power users will still replace it with something else, but for everybody else, it's going to be a nice change, and those small hidden features will definitely help with using this as your default file manager. Apart from Nautilus, the calendar app is now responsive and has a nice sidebar with an agenda view, a date picker, and pinch gestures to zoom in or out of week view and display more or less events. Other changes include GNOME To Do being removed from the default install, Gedit being replaced by GNOME Editor, the new simple text app, although they kept GNOME Terminal and didn't move to GNOME Console. And you're still not getting the new Flutter-based installer, and you're still getting the same old buggy and slow Ubuntu Snap Store based on an older version of GNOME software that doesn't get all the updates that GNOME Software 43 has. But there's finally hope on that front, because no, they are not moving to the default GNOME software, unfortunately, but they're working on their own Flutter-based Ubuntu Snap Store that seems a lot more responsive, a lot faster, looks a lot nicer, and generally should integrate really well with the Yaru theme. So, yeah, we'll have to wait for that, but at least they're working on it. Now, since 22.10 is the first Ubuntu version to include Libadvita apps by default, let's look at how they integrate. Nautilus, Text Editor, Settings, and Calendar are four Libadvita apps being shipped out of the box by Ubuntu. And you can notice that their theme is a little bit different from the other apps. Buttons don't have a box around them, menus are more padded, and they get that new About dialog. But they do integrate really well apart from that. And honestly, it didn't bother me at all when using 22.10. These apps use your accent color and your dark mode, no problem. So yeah, distributions can make sure that Libadvita apps look nice once they're installed on the system. And sure, Ubuntu is helped by the fact that Yaru is really close to the Advita theme by default. Other more complex themes that change the button shapes entirely or, or the window controls might have a little bit more problems, but honestly, it looks doable and it integrates really well. Now, where it all falls apart is when you start installing other applications. Snap apps seem to follow the accent color and the dark mode. For example, I installed Gedit and it respected everything automatically. Apps from the repos also will follow. Flatpak applications, though, will vary. For example, Warpinator, by default installed from Flathub, followed the default theme, the default Yaru theme, in its GTK3 variant. But if I used another accent color or dark mode, it reverted to the default Advaita theme, blue and gray. Bottles, installed from Flathub, doesn't use the default theme and colors at all, and doesn't follow the accent colors either, but it does follow dark mode. So it's still a bit of a mess if you don't use the packaging formats that Ubuntu pushes by default. If you want to add Flathub and Flatpak on Ubuntu, your desktop will look completely incoherent. And sure, Ubuntu doesn't ship Flatpak or Flathub by default, so this incoherent mess is on you for installing those. 
But still, I wish GNOME developers would hurry and develop this recoloring API and this accent colors portal. Like having these settings be accessible by every app from any toolkit on any packaging format would basically solve all this mess once and for all. So yeah, please GNOME developers try and find some time or funding or whatever to work on these things. They are crucial to make sure our desktops stay coherent and don't look like Windows, basically. Okay, let's take a quick tour of what has changed in the official Ubuntu flavors. Ubuntu 22.10 is on Plasma 5.25, not 5.26, which means it lacks all the nice polish and bug fixing that went on in that release. It still gets accent colors from wallpapers, floating panels, better GDK app theming inside of KDE, a way better tablet mode, and really cool touchpad gestures on Wayland. Plus some discover improvements, and all KDE apps will get their latest KDE gear updates. It's a worthy upgrade, but as always, Kubuntu falls in between KDE Plasma releases, which means it ships with a four-month-old desktop instead of the latest one. It might be time to rethink their release schedule here. Ubuntu Studio is not getting pipe wire, as they had a lot of audio bugs to squash in priority. The installer also gets a feature uninstaller that lets you remove everything you don't want to keep from the install. Ubuntu Studio was always super complete, but it addressed a lot of use cases, each of which might not need all the apps and features that are there for other people, so it's nice to see that. It still uses KDE and moves to Plasma 5.25 with the same changes as Kubuntu. Ubuntu Mate 22.10 sells itself as a quality of life improvement. The main changes are the ability to center align applets in the panel, instead of just aligning them left or right, there's also a new AI-generated wallpaper, Pipewire does replace Pulse Audio, the Mate HUD now has a new settings panel to easily configure it, and Mate User Manager is a new utility that lets you manage and configure users. Few changes here, but Mate is still alive and well. It still gets contributions, it still gets active development, and it's still there for people who prefer the GNOME 2 way of doing things. I personally get a huge pang of nostalgia every time I look at Mate. Ubuntu Unity is the new arrival in this list of official flavors, and 22.10 brings a new toggle in the panel to switch between light and dark themes and between accent colors. Libvita apps are removed and are replaced with Mate alternatives, so they should support the global menu and the themes. The ISO has been trimmed down and RAM usage is now significantly lower. Xubuntu 22.10 gets a refreshed icon theme to be more consistent and polished, as does the Greybird GDK theme. Libvita apps are kept here and will not be themed, and XFC apps will be on their 4.17 version, while 4.18 is still in active development. The changes here are relatively minor. Ubuntu Budgie got a new Budgie menu with a traditional layout, with a Places, Control Center, and Settings button. Applets can now be globally spaced on panels instead of needing individual spacers, the Budgie theme has been completely reworked, and there's a new styling drop-down menu in the Budgie desktop settings to handle dark or light mode for Libadvita applications. Ubuntu Budgie also moved to Pipewire, and most of the default apps have moved from GNOME applications to Mate alternatives, or have been dropped from the install altogether, probably to not ship Libadvita apps as a default. And I couldn't find any update notes on other Ubuntu versions at the time I made this video. All these variants should be available at the exact same time as the regular GNOME-based Ubuntu desktop. So, Ubuntu 22.10. It's a worthy upgrade just for the quick settings and the improved performance. If you don't want to stick to LTS releases, just apply the upgrade as soon as it's offered, it's definitely a good version. I like that Ubuntu is now sticking a lot more closely to GNOME releases. They're on GNOME 43 when GNOME 43 released last month. It's great. And I like the way they integrated Libadvita apps to not have them stick out like a sore thumb. And if you don't need Flathub or Flatpak, which you probably don't on Ubuntu since the repos are already jam-packed and they have basically everything in the Snap Store, if you prefer Snaps and don't like Flatpaks, then Ubuntu is absolutely going to look great and work great for you. If you do mix and match applications from various sources though, strap in because it's going to look rough as long as GNOME devs don't ship their accent color implementation and their recoloring API. 
I really hope this work lands in GNOME soon to fix this monstrosity of an incoherent colored desktop. We need cohesive distros and good looking distros, whatever the packaging format, whatever the app supports, it just needs to look good by default. And speaking of looking good, how about today's sponsor? Tuxedo is a company based in Germany and they make laptops and desktops that ship worldwide and ship with Linux pre-installed. And the reason you might want that instead of any generic laptop or off-the-shelf desktop is because it removes all the hassle and all the research process. You know when you buy a laptop or desktop from Tuxedo that all the hardware is supported by Linux, that everything will work out of the box. You plug in your USB drive, you install your distro, and it works. And that's the end of it. And you don't have to research for the exact specific model. Plus they have a huge lineup of devices from the smallest Ultrabooks to the biggest towers and workstations and gaming laptops and you can configure all of them with a lot of options, including your own logo on the back or a custom keyboard layout if you prefer. So if you need a new device, stop looking around at five-year-old forum posts to see if your future buy is supported. Just click on the link in the description below and get a device that actually supports Linux development and actually runs Linux well. So, thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, and if you didn't, well, the dislike button also exists. And if you want to support the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath the video, there's a PayPal link in the description, or there are links to my Patreon page or my YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast on every Monday where I talk about Linux, open source, my channel, personal life and other more general reflections. And you also get to vote on the topics that I'll cover for the month that comes after. So if you're interested, all the links are in the description. And in the meantime, thank you guys for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!